Hi there, this is James from Junior Developer Central and I wanted to make you a quick video today just to show you how you can retrieve the uh, value of a, a text or an input element on a page using jQuery. So it's going to be a really short video because this is dead simple to do um, but there's a few people that have been asking this question over and over again so I thought I'd make a video just so I can point people to this um, just to explain in depth how to do it. So I've created a, a really simple or you could call it shoddy uh, login page here. So it's just a bit of context um, why you might want to do this. Um, so if you imagine the users typing in their username and password and clicking the login button, you might want to do some pre-checks before you sort of send it to the server to make sure that they've actually entered a, a username and password. But for our purposes, we're just going to use those fields just to retrieve the values. So if we go into our code, you'll see that literally all I have in here at the moment is just a couple of input button, uh, input tags, uh, a button and a couple of labels to go along with that as well. I've already imported jQuery into the page, so uh, let's get started actually trying to retrieve that values. So let's open up another script tag. And the first thing you should do really when you're using jQuery on your page is wrap everything in a... Um, a sort of document ready function. So if you haven't come across this before, all that will do is just wait until the entire HTML page has loaded. Um, so if you're trying to access a value that hasn't actually loaded on the page yet, then you're going to get an error. So it's always good practice to kind of wrap everything in this. So um, I'm going to show you the syntax now. So if you actually want to just plug this into your own um, project to actually retrieve the uh, value for a um, input um, field that you've got. So we can do a couple of things here. Um, the way we need to target it is to sort of use uh, target an input um, uh, tag that we've got and also then to actually retrieve that value you simply use the val function. So we could say for example our username is equal to the uh, the value of the inputs tag. But you might have seen a problem here. Um, there are actually two input tags on there, so how do we differentiate between the two? Well, we could do something like this and set the, the type that we're targeting and say, you know, the type is e when the type is equal to text, that would be the username. And then sort of repeat that and say for the password, um, we'll target the input tag that's got the type set to password. And that'll work. Um, we can actually do that. Um, because these uh, the, these uh, input tags have got different types, so we can target those using the CSS selector. Um, the only thing is that might be a little bit unclear and what happens if you put in more text inputs into your form, um, it's going to get a bit messy. So uh, what you might be better off doing is giving those um, input tags um, their own IDs. So let's just call those username and password as well. And now in our jQuery selector, what we can actually do is just target the... Oops. The username. And don't forget, you need the uh, the hash there to specify that we're selecting an ID, as you would do with CSS, basically, and password. Okay. So if we actually were to run this now, um, and uh, to our page, we won't see anything at this point, simply because the um, the username and password. Uh, variables aren't doing anything, they will be set and they'll, they'll be set to nothing because there'll be nothing in the um, the, 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 the input fo field forms when uh, we actually uh, load the page. So a bit of a more useful example might be when the user clicks the login button, uh, we might want them to actually um, get the username and password uh, fields then. So as I said before, you can then send those to the server knowing that you've kind of checked them uh, that they're actually get filled out. So the way we do that, um, let's just target the um, button in the form. So there's only one button on the page, so we don't need to worry about specifying that via an ID or anything. Um, but let's say on click, and let's go function, 
and let's move the um, the username and the uh, password uh, variables into there. So when the user now clicks the button, that's where we'll actually set those variables. Um, we'll just actually log those out to the console, just so we can see those in there. So now what should happen is when we click the button, the username and the password uh, are retrieved from the form by using the, the val method. Um, and we've targeted those individual fields um, by their uh, CSS ID tag. Um, and then we should just log those to the console. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to fill these in. And let's just open up our console. So we've got that there. And let me click the login button. So if I actually go to the console, you'll see that it's blank. Now, why is that? Because we actually did log the value out to the console. Well, if you notice, when you click the login button on this page at the moment, what it's actually doing is submitting the form. Because the last button that appears in a, um, a HTML form acts as the submit button. So when I actually click that button at the moment, it's just submitting the form and it's not actually running this code or it doesn't have chance to run this code that's here. So the way we get around that is if we pass in to the function of the click handler, the event uh, parameter, it doesn't matter what you call it, it can be E sometimes people use or EV or EVT for event, short for event, it doesn't matter what you call it, you can use anything. But we can actually say event dot prevent default so by calling that function on the event parameter that's passed in it will actually stop that form from being submitted so let's try that again and let me put that in so you notice the page didn't refresh and if we go to our console you'll see those are the values that are typed in for the username and the password so that's pretty much all there is to it, really, in terms of retrieving um, a value via jQuery. Um, so I said it'd be a pretty short video, didn't I? There's, there's not too much to it. It just depends on how you want to actually select the um, the element. Um, but all you need to do once you've actually selected it via ID or class, uh, or however you're doing that, all you need to do is call the dot .val function on top of it, and that will actually retrieve the value that's stored in the input field. So that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye for now.